Hi everybody, this is your weekly horoscope for Monday the 6th of November going through until Sunday the 12th of November 2017. Thank you for joining me, it's really nice to be with you today. I'm going to give you a day-by-day -day rundown of what this week is about. It's a really positive week coming up, but it's um, tricky in the sense that there are certain uh, energies that appear on certain days. It's not the kind of week where you have to be on your toes every day because the energy is shifting every day. This week the energy shifts every kind of two to three days but it's important to align yourself with that energy because you can really be productive and make a lot of progress if you do align yourself with the energy that's supporting you. If you go against the grain and you kind of resist this then you may feel a sense of frustration or being stuck. So I'm going to give you this day by day rundown. On Monday the 6th of November we've got the moon in Gemini. So that's in an air sign and it's quite light. It opposes Saturn in Sagittarius and squares Chiron in Pisces, water sign, very spiritual, very emotionally, emotionally connected and profound. You may start the week here feeling emotionally saturated, like it's enough, you know? The intellectual washing machine is going, the emotional washing machine is going, the sun is in Scorpio, there are a lot of planets in Scorpio, so you'll have noticed that things are quite intense at the moment in terms of your relationships, in terms of um, what's going on in the media, in terms of the conversations you're having with people, everything is coming to the surface and it's quite intense. So because of all, all of that, you may have a hard time getting out of yourself. So on Monday, it's really important to try and do things for other people and to work and not to ruminate or to try and analyze and dissect the self. You're not going to get very far in terms of analyzing yourself because astrologically here with Chiron in Pisces and the Sun in Scorpio, Saturn in Sagittarius, it's kind of foggy astrologically. So you're not going to get these great insights that you're looking for, even if you sit there and meditate for six hours. That's not the best way to use the energy of Monday. The best way to use it is to take action, practical action, to support other people and to work, to use your skills and to get things done, to be productive. That's the best way to use the energy on Monday and to try and stay away from the emotional kind of pit. Um, it's not negative in a sense, but it's not productive either. I mean, you can sit with your feelings and feel them, but it's useful if you get like these eureka moments and insights from them. But I really don't see that happening on Monday. It's just kind of emotional fog. Now on Tuesday, even more water comes into the chart because the moon moves into Cancer at 1046 in the morning. So the moon in Cancer is nurturing, it's family oriented, it's loyal, it's loving, it's nurturing, it's caring. That adds to the equation. And then Venus, the planet of love, beauty, relationships, that moves into Scorpio as well. Also from an air sign, just the way the moon was in Gemini on Monday in an air sign and moves into Cancer on Tuesday, so air to water. Venus was in Libra, an air sign, and now it also moves into water, into Scorpio. So things are getting more intense. On Tuesday, we're hitting the emotional peak of the Scorpio season. So the moon is in a water sign, making you more nurturing and emotional. The Venus in Scorpio will now regard matters of the heart as really being life and death. That's how important it's going to seem. So when your emotions become that strong and they seem that serious, you tend to lose your sense of humor about it and you really become very kind of almost obsessed and you know blinkered and focused on your feelings and they are so important and everything is just so intense try and back off a little bit and take a breath oh you know these are just feelings feelings pass and usually they're they start with thoughts so try and put some positive thinking into this situation look to the future with a sense of hope and put a make an explicit effort to kind of be positive and upbeat here on Tuesday. Now, Tuesday is great for people in loving romantic relationships to share intimate moments and to really get close to one another. Um, it's also great for people who are trying to develop a connection with a power greater than themselves or with their higher selves. 
And it's also a wonderful day to meet a new person, a new love, a new relationship. So love is in the air here on Tuesday, the 7th of November. It's all about the emotional side of things. So again, it's not the best day to self-analyze. It's about taking action. The first two days here of the week, definitely take a lot of action. If you have a desire to be in a relationship, then go and date. And if you are in a relationship, you're very happy, then spend some time together. But don't analyze the situation too much and just go with it and try and be in the present moment. That's what's gonna help you the most. On Wednesday, the 8th of November, we have the moon still in Cancer. That now trines the sun in Scorpio. So the sun is in the watery sign of Scorpio as well. And the sun is the most important thing in the astrology. So the fact that that is in Scorpio means that we're in Scorpio season here and the sun in Scorpio trines Neptune in Pisces. So on Wednesday the 8th we have the moon in water, the sun in water and Neptune, the water planet in water. <laughs> so Wednesday the 8th is a great day for people who work as intuitives, mediums, psychics, spiritual healers, faith healers, anything to do with the unmanifest, people who do channeling work, anything intuitive. Also, it's a great day to manifest what you want in your life and to understand what's going on for you emotionally. So the first two days of the week, Monday and Tuesday, you've had this washing machine thing going on and it's been kind of pointless in a sense because you've been the biggest successes you're going to have on Monday and Tuesday are when you take action and not when you overthink things and try and analyze them. However, on Wednesday, it's now time to kind of shift that and to start focusing on the emotional stuff because on Wednesday, the real you and your real desires and your real feelings are going to organically arise. You know, we don't always know what it is we want. You can meditate and you can pray and you can talk to people, but sometimes you don't even realize that there's something inside you that says this is the right way to go, this is not the right way to go. It can all become incredibly confusing, especially on days like Monday and Tuesday. So if you're trying to figure out what it is you want in life and you're a little bit lost, if you don't know what you want to do in your career or you don't know what where you want to live, you don't know where... You want to end up in terms of your relationships. Do you want to stay unmarried? Is that something that you're deliberately, you know, you have a thing about that you don't want to be in a relationship, you want to be single, or do you want to be single? The messages that you get on Wednesday, the 8th of November are really good. You can trust that and um, you can really use the information and capture it to manifest these realities into your future. I'm a triple earth sign. So I really like rituals and I like things that are grounded and tangible in some way. So on Wednesday the 8th, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to write a list of the things that come up, the things that I want to manifest. So for instance, um, I want to manifest a great job or I want to manifest a great house or a better health or a partner or anything like that. And then you go into detail and you write specifics about how you want this to be and at the bottom, Write something like, or whatever the universe has in store for me, or something beyond my wildest dreams. Doing that kind of opens it up to the universe and it allows it to become kind of collaborative and work with you. Um, and what I do when I make those kind of lists, because I'm so earthy, I burn the paper and watch the ashes kind of fly away. And that's a symbolic kind of gesture to me of letting go of these desires and sending them off to the universe and letting the universe deal with them. Uh, when I first started getting into kind of metaphysics and stuff, I, I read some of Louise Hay's work and she had a great way of describing manifestation. She um, used the metaphor of being at a restaurant. So if you're at a restaurant and you order the pesto chicken, you don't then follow the waiter into the kitchen where he puts the order on the board and then you don't look over the cook's shoulder you know, while he's making your pesto chicken. <laughs> Although I think that would be quite a good idea, actually. Um, you don't do that, do you? you? You put your order in, you say to the waiter, I'd like the pesto chicken, and then you have your glass of water and you chat with your friend and you get on with it and you trust that things are being taken care of and that you're going to get what you want.
You just trust that. And it's the same thing with manifestation. The point is to let go. Once you've said, this is what I want, this is what I'd like to manifest. And if you're not like me, if you're not super earthy, if you're an air sign or a water sign, maybe you can just feel what it is you want and, and see images of it. Or maybe you can think it and it's like a piece of music and it just flows through your mind and it flows out into the universe and you can see the kind of metaphorical notes just kind of floating away from you. Then that's your way of doing it. The key is to focus on what you want and then to let it go into the universe and to be hands off about it and to say, I give up control now. I trust that it's being taken care of and I'll just wait to see what appears in my life. So Wednesday is awesome in terms of manifestation, in terms of intuitive work, and in terms of understanding yourself. So all this stuff that, you know, if you meditate for six hours on Monday and you get nowhere, if you do the same thing on Wednesday, you'll get everywhere. You'll make huge progress in terms of where you are and who you are and what you want. Now on Thursday, the 9th of November, the moon goes into Leo at 30 minutes past noon. And that's based on UK time. All my horoscopes are based on UK time. Just take the time difference into account. And also with these energies, it's not like, you know, um, if the moon changes at 12.30, then on the dot, all the energy changes. It's kind of more a gradual organic process like nature, okay? So the moon does go into Leo on the 9th of November. The Leo moon then squares Venus in Scorpio and the lucky planet Jupiter, which is also in Scorpio. So as I said, everything's in Scorpio at the moment and happy birthday, Scorpios. So on Thursday, the 9th, things lighten up considerably. Hooray. Yes, there's still a lot of emotions floating around, but good luck supports you now. And you can really have fun just being out and about on this day. It's a great day again to meet someone new because you have so much kind of enthusiasm and passion and optimism within yourself and you're naturally light and upbeat and happy that you go out and about and that you kind of exude this light and happy energy and other people will be attracted by that energy. And that's why it's a great day to start a new relationship, to meet a new friend, to have a great conversation with a new acquaintance, anything like that. Now, Friday, the 10th of November, we have the last quarter moon. So what that what means is that the moon is winding down from being a full moon to being a new moon. So when it's full, it's totally illuminated and totally round and bright. When it's a new moon, it's totally black. And the moon is now at its halfway point here on Friday, the 10th, between being a full moon and being a new moon. So things are slowing down. The moon is kind of going to sleep a little bit. Things are quietening down. So it's winding down to become a new moon. It's still in Leo and it squares the sun in Scorpio and it sextiles Mars in Libra. So again, the focus on Friday is going to be on other people and the relationships that you can build. This is of great interest to you at the moment and it's an excellent day, like the day before, to make new connections with people. But here on Friday, it's particularly through social functions, events, gatherings, parties, uh, workshops, anything where groups of people are gathered to do things. Friday, that's where you can really make a wonderful new connection. It can be, it can be a, a friendship or a romantic connection, but because everything is in Scorpio, it's gonna feel intense. So it's much more likely to have a kind of romantic slant to it or a romantic element to it because everything is so magnetic. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, the planet of transformation and rebirth. So people are intense and people are kind of pulled towards each other, like on a string. I remember I, um, I was at a conference um, many years ago and I was looking for a sponsor because I'm in recovery. And um, it was a weird experience. This is, by the way, if you're in rec recovery, this is not how you pick a sponsor. This is how I did it. I just, um, I was just reading a brochure or something. I looked up and I saw this guy and I knew that he was gonna be my sponsor. So I felt like I was on, like, uh, I was like on a board with wheels and I was just being pulled towards him. I found myself walking over to him and saying, 
Are you going to be my sponsor? I had no idea who this person was, and he's been my sponsor for five years. It worked out. So sometimes these things you just have to trust, even if they don't make sense. Um, let's see, where are we? Okay, so moving on to Saturday the 11th of November then. The moon moves into Virgo at 4.42 in the afternoon. Saturn trines Uranus, and this is really important. Um, it's the second time that these two planets, they're both outer planets, Saturn and Uranus, second time that they have formed this harmonious trine this year, but they're not going to do so again until 2037. So Saturn is about structure and what we have in our lives and what is consistent and what is present. And Uranus is about innovation and science and um, new discoveries and inventions and doing good things for humanity and helping every person on the planet. So these two, when they form a trine connection, some new innovation, some new helpful technology is going to come into our lives and stay in our lives. So I think that, um, first of all, the moon going into Virgo is very positive because the emotional stuff is mitigated by the analytical nature of Virgo. Virgo doesn't care about emotions. Virgo cares about facts and figures. It cares about how much money is in the bank, how secure you are, how well you're dressed, how neat and tidy you are. If there's dirt under your fingernails, that's what Virgo cares about, okay? It doesn't care about, oh, I feel rather tempestuous today. It doesn't do that. <laughs> okay. I don't know why that's cracking me up so much, but that's what it does. Okay, so emotions immediately come down a little bit. And also, like I said, there may be a great scientific breakthrough or advancement in the field of artificial intelligence here on this day, on Saturday, the 11th of November. Yeah, so some sort of invention. I think, um, I mean, the, the AI thing, that's something that's going to develop anyway. And I really think that in 2020, there's going to be a big shift in terms of what they do with artificial intelligence. But I think there's some sort of progress here that's made, some sort of discovery on Saturday that's going to help. And that's going to stay and that's going to be an important step to progressing in that field or the field of technology in general okay now on sunday the 12th of november finally we still have the moon in virgo so again it mitigates the emotional stuff that's been going on all week it sextiles the lucky planet jupiter which is in scorpio and the sun in scorpio and it squares mercury the communication planet which is in sagittarius so mercury in it's is the communication planet. <clears throat> it rules Virgo and it rules Gemini. When it's in Virgo, it likes to analyze and make sense of things. When it's in Gemini, it likes to communicate and express what it's learned. In Sagittarius, it overshoots the mark a little bit because it's so excited, it just wants to explore everything. It tends to miss a couple of details because it's just on to the next thing all the time. So Sunday the 12th, you may find a little bit confusing. So you'll try to gather emotional information. That's what the Virgo moon is doing with the sextile to the um, sun and Jupiter. But it's unsatisfying and not particularly illuminating. So it's very similar to Monday in a way. Um, it's not the best day to make a decision about starting or ending a relationship, hobby or job. So or making a big decision about any major life thing because Mercury in Sagittarius is like five miles ahead and you're trying to make a decision in the here and now and you're already thinking five steps ahead. It doesn't work like that. So this is a good day for not taking action, for actually being introspective and discovering more about the direction that you'd like to go in instead of actually doing it. So opposite to Monday. So, so Monday was, you have this huge urge to go within and to analyze yourself, but it doesn't provide you with anything. And the biggest success you can have on Monday is to really be productive and to work hard, okay? And on Sunday, you're gonna be somewhat confused and puzzled. Um, the emotions are gonna be important to you, but actually, instead of trying to divert yourself or distract yourself by working or being productive or getting out of yourself by helping others, it is a good day for discovering more about yourself and to get those emotional insights and 
intuitive hits and the guidance in terms of where you want to go in future. And that kind of reminds me as well of uh, Wednesday, which was a great day to manifest and to get to the truth of who you are. So it's a week of understanding the self, but using the energy and delving into it on particular days instead of others. So Monday and Tuesday are out in terms of self-analysis. Wednesday is great for self-analysis and so is Sunday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they're much more about relationships, focusing on other people and making new connections, new relationships and bringing new information in, new, and even new scientific information, okay? So Monday and Sunday are the main things to just be aware of. Monday, work. Sunday, if you do want to do that kind of inner work, then it's the best day to do it in this week. So I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. It looks like an excellent week. Uh, you'll be able to get a lot done and romantically it looks wonderful. So if you're single, hooray. Um, if you would like a prior reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab to order your reading. And in all of my readings, I use astrology, tarot, and numerology. The astrology gives me a blueprint of your soul. It shows me what your life mission is, what you're good at job-wise, um, what's coming up for you in future in terms of work, in terms of abundance, love life, spirituality, family. I can also look at your strengths and weaknesses, the things that you can transform, um, the things that are your biggest obstacles, really any question you have, I can look at. So if you'd like a private reading with me, then please visit gregoryscott.com and either click on the book your reading button on the front page or the readings tab and order your reading. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll speak to you tomorrow for the daily tarot, next week for these weekly horoscopes, and check out the monthly horoscopes for each sign of the zodiac. Those are out again for November. I uh, changed the format, so it wasn't out in October, but the November ones are out, so have a look at those if you're interested. And that's for your signs specifically, so Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, all of those. Okay, have a wonderful week, and I'll speak to you soon.